What is going on, you guys? Pet Platypus here, and it is time for another series to be reviewed from Episode 1. You read the title, The Legendary Gurren Lagan, Gurren Lagan, however you pronounce it. Um, I'm going to be reviewing that series from Episode 1, so like I did with Hunter x Hunter back in the day and what I did with Young Justice. First three episodes, first impressions, let's get going. I decided to go with Gurren Lagann because it's a pretty legendary series. It has a lot of uh, popularity amongst anime fans, so I figured I would, you know, it's short, you know, not too long, one season type thing, so I figured it'd be a good one to review from episode one. So, starting off with the story, because there's really not much to say. In fact, let's start off with the world building, start off with the setup, actually. You have underground towns and villages that drill and dig and look for, well, in the case of Simon, he looks for treasures, but they drill and dig and look for resources and stuff, and they don't even know, like the younger ones and even some of the older ones, they don't know that there's a surface, they don't, if that's like a myth or whatever, so that's really interesting. They've been down there for a very long time, and when something from the surface does break down, it's this giant mech head thing, and then Simone finds a smaller giant mech thing. It's still pretty big, but it's smaller than the other ones. And uh, they have fra they have facial expressions and stuff, and they're really weird, and they're really cool, kind of. And there's a fight, and then they go to the surface, and they meet up with this chick named Yoko. Uh, by they, I mean Kamina and fucking Simone. And uh, I'll get into the characters in a second, but I'm just sort of giving you the setup. And now that they're on the surface, they sort of get pulled into like this, not really rebellion, but like this sort of rebellion that has to fight against these beast people who control these gunmen. And they get a couple of gunmen of their own. And that's pretty much all I've seen based on the first three episodes. You get some characterization, so I guess that's a good segue to get into the characters. But as far as story and plot goes, really not a lot. Like, I mean, there's like the setup and the world building, but like as far as the actual plot and story goes, I mean, there's Kamina wanting to reunite with his dad on the surface, but since his dad died, there's really not a lot there. They're just kind of there, now they're doing their thing. I don't know if it's gonna have an episodic nature or if it's gonna have a big plot, but uh, I'll wait and see, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the story setup and the world building. I definitely give the world building a solid plus. I think it's pretty cool the way it's set up. It's definitely mysterious and interesting, especially how the surface is like a myth. That's definitely the most interesting part, because how long have people been down there? I don't know if they're going to explore that too much, but that'd be cool. And then you have the story, which, like I said, not much going on. So moving on to the characters. So as far as the characters go, I will start off with Yoko, because there's really not much to say. Uh, Personality-wise, she's cool. She's just kind of a normal chick. She's kind of no-nonsense, but not really. You know, it's just sort of like she's more mature than Kamina, clearly, so she shows that when they bicker with each other, and uh, she looks good, and she's good with a rifle, and that's really all there is to say about her, and that she's exploited for fan service. But I kind of like that she's not, like, a hypocrite about it. Like, she addresses really revealing but at the same time, she doesn't really seem to care when Simone is on top of her. Uh, there's a moment where they're in uh, Log On flying, and she positions herself in a way where she's pressed up against Simone, but she's like, hold still. So she doesn't really seem to care about that stuff too much, which is reflective in the way she dresses. So that's kind of good, you know, because I've seen series. As a perfect example is like My Hero Academia. I remember the scene where, uh, oh, I don't know her name, but she's the one who could like, make anything out of her body, like, any inorganic thing. She has, like, the black hair and the red outfit. And she has, like, this super short skirt on on her outfit. And little grape dude takes a peek at her, and she gets all pissed off at him. And I'm just looking at her like, really? You're going to wear a skirt that practically shows your ass, and then you're going to get mad when someone looks at it? Like, it just seems kind of weird, you know what I mean? So, yeah. At least she, her personality and outfit kind of go together. Uh, but rambling aside on that... Uh, next character, Kamina, blue-haired dude, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I pointed that out, blue-haired dude, got the red sunglasses, he's pretty cool, he's got a cool design, uh, I like him, even though he blows a lot of hot air and he's kind of full of himself, um, he's fun, and he has some skill with a sword, you know, he's not the worst, so, you know, he's, uh, he's pretty cool, uh, very funny, I know I'm not, I'm not trying to get into, like, the specifics yet, but it was so funny when he used a gun for the first time, and he, like, flipped it and started, that was so funny, uh, but yeah, he's a fun character, 
uh, man's man. It was kind of funny seeing him say like the man's man stuff. And then he has these sunglasses that are very reminiscent of Frankie from uh, One Piece. That was very interesting, uh, to say the least, and very funny. And the last character we have is Simone. And he's pretty much the main character, at least you could assume. And he is a cowardly main character, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I think it works here because... He's born underground, he doesn't know if the surface is even a real place, and then he's suddenly there, and there's these giant mechs, and it can be overwhelming. And if you're a character who's already kind of naturally timid, yeah, it could fuck with you. So I accept that he's cowardly, I think it makes sense. The key thing is character development and how it's handled, uh, so hopefully that goes well. And uh, at the very beginning of the episode, we clearly see that that's him at the beginning. I'm like 99% sure that was him because it's Yuri Lowenthal voicing both characters. So, yeah, at least it really sounds like Yuri Lowenthal is playing uh, uh, Simo. And definitely decent range. I've never heard him like do a voice like that for a cowardly character. I think it really works, too. Uh, he usually sounds like Sasuke in most everything. That's why I point that out. But, uh, yeah. Those are your three main characters. We also have a side character. I forget his name, uh, but he's gay, and he looks very weird, and he's voiced by Steve Bloom, and sounds like Steve Bloom. So, yeah, he's kind of funny, but not really much to say about him. He's just going to be their mechanic, and that's sort of their squad. And, yeah, that's pretty much the characters. It really doesn't give you a lot in these first three episodes. I don't know if that's going to be a trend throughout the whole series, or if we're going to get a lot of expansion on the characters, or get introduced to other characters... I don't really know what the tone is going to be yet. So far, it's pretty lighthearted and comedic, but that could definitely change. So, yeah, don't know what's going to happen there, but it definitely has, like, that fun vibe that you want to see from a series like this with an art style like this. And I guess I should probably get into that, those technical aspects of the series. Uh, well, story and world building stuff are already technical aspects, but... In terms of art and animation, it's actually really, really solid. Uh, it looks fantastic from an animation standpoint. There's some really well-done scenes. Uh, the mech fights look really, really nice. Character animation is good. It's a simplistic art style that allows for more expressive animation, so that's definitely a plus. And, yeah, it all comes together really nicely. I wasn't really sure what to expect, because I know that the director of this show or at least like him and his team, or like a team of animators, they went off and formed Studio Trigger and split off from Gainax. So I've only seen one thing from Trigger, and that's Kill a Kill, and Kill a Kill's animation did not impress me that much, for the most part. It definitely has its moments, don't get me wrong. But uh, And I'll probably do a review of Kill a Kill at some point on this channel, but um, as far as the animation here goes, leagues above Kill a Kill, just so much better. Uh, Gainax living up to their name, being one of the big... Uh, big big studios from Japan and yeah it looked really really nice so yeah the episodes look great from an animation standpoint arts fairly consistent for what it is it's a simplistic art style there's gonna be some weirdly drawn hands and characters every once in a while but not a big deal at all and that's pretty much as art and animation uh, music I have nothing to say I can't remember the beat of a single song in the OST yet opening was fairly generic but I could warm up to them. That's pretty much how it is whenever I'm giving a first impressions. I usually have to warm up to the music. So, that aside, there's really not much else to say. Pacing, kind of fast-paced, I suppose. Just sort of nothing too extravagant as far as pacing goes. Uh, no, there's really not too much to say about these episodes. Uh, the story hasn't really gotten going yet. The characters haven't gone through any crazy arcs or anything. It really is just getting the ball rolling and... Uh, for that, it's pretty good. It's nothing mind-blowing just yet, but I'll give it a chance. I'm not overhyped for the series or anything. I'm not expecting or demanding greatness from it. I'm going to go in with an open mind and set the hype for the series aside because it is a very popular series. But yeah, I can't really give this a rating or anything. I can just really say that I enjoyed my time watching the episodes. I thought they were pretty fun. Uh, the only hints to like any like emotion or maybe slightly darker aspects... Uh, there's the moment when Kamina first controls a uh, gunman, and he sees the skull. That moment gets a little heavy. Not heavy, heavy, but, you know, it's kind of a... It's a moment, to say the least. And then when he finds his dad's skeleton, and he takes the cape at the end of Episode 3, so... It looks like it might have a little bit of heart to it. I'll just have to wait and see how things go. Uh, but, yeah, definitely excited to watch more Gurren Lagan. So, with all that being said... What did you guys think of the first couple episodes of the series when you first started watching it? Uh, what do you think of the series in general? No spoilers, please. Also, if you have any episodes that uh, 
you think I should live react to, definitely throw those down in the comments section below if you know the episode number. Don't say anything about the episodes, just tell me which ones you think would be cool to live react to, and maybe I'll do that. So, yeah, because that's what I did for Hunter x Hunter, and that was fun, and I wasn't able to do that with any of the other series that I've done from episode one. So, with all that being said, tell me that stuff in the comments section below. Also, follow me on Instagram or add me on PSN. I'm Pep Platypus on both. You can also give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. Both of those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.